So the other day my mom came into town to visit and I remember it was like maybe an hour before she arrived and I thought to myself, I guess I'll tidy up a little bit before she gets here. And it hit me like, wow. A few years ago, I could have never waited until an hour before company arrived to just tidy for a little bit. Usually it was something that I had to start at least the day before. There would be a lot to declutter. I had to put away stuff, probably a lot of stuff I'd try to hide in closets and I'd hope they wouldn't see it. I'd frantically try to hide stuff out in the garage. And the main reason it took me so long to get ready for company was because I just had too much stuff to manage. article the other day that said that 40 percent of all of our housework is just taking care of our clutter this was a stat from the cleaning institute and i don't know how they really gauge exactly how much time is spent on your clutter but i would wage that 40 percent is pretty accurate if not a little bit low the amount of time it takes us to tend to our stuff is a lot of time now the vast majority of us have clutter of some kind in our home, certainly some more than others, but truth be told, we're really a nation that is waging a war on clutter. And as someone who shares videos on decluttering and organization, I've read a lot of articles on the topic and most of them are very doomsday in style. It's all about the clutter that's overwhelming us. It talks about how our clutter is costing us money, it's affecting our health, it's ruining our lives. And this isn't untrue. Clutter is very likely doing most of those things. I recently shared a video about some surprising facts about clutter. And in reading studies and articles for that video, I learned how people with clutter have higher cortisol levels. They don't sleep as well. They aren't as productive. I learned that a woman's stress at home is directly linked to the amount of stuff she has and that clutter can actually trigger avoidance techniques like overeating and procrastination. Our clutter leads to some scary side effects. But in today's video, I don't want to tackle clutter in this doomsday style piece because while I find these facts and studies extremely interesting, like so fascinating, they aren't all that helpful when it comes to actually learning how to rid yourself of stuff. They really just spew a ton of facts at you on why clutter is killing you and ruining your life and then leave you with a few bullet points at the end to remind you not to keep things that don't spark joy. Like, wow. Gee, thanks, I'm so organized now. Now, as I shared in the story about my mom coming to visit, I've personally gotten a lot better about controlling the clutter in my home in the last five years. And while there is usually at least one area of my house at any given moment that needs to be tidied, usually one of my kids' bedrooms, and I typically have some area that has become the unofficial dumping ground of stuff, usually toggles between my basement or the garage, it's all manageable. I'm often not more than an hour away from give, getting even the most disorganized part of my home back in order. And this has mainly come down to being better about controlling my stuff. And I think it's so interesting because it was such a relieving and peaceful moment when my mom came to visit knowing I had someone coming and I didn't have to rush around and frantically get my home in order for them. And I was thinking about that link to clutter and stress and how clutter really causes a stress for so many reasons, but it's not just looking at it that's stressful. It's the management of it, knowing it's there and thinking about having to take care of it. I recently watched a really good video from Dawn. She um, runs The Minimal Mom. I'll link it down below, but she was basically talking about what is your clutter telling you. Now, Dawn always does such a good job helping you reason with not having too much stuff. She talks a lot about how everything you own um, is something you have to like manage and inventory. And she shared this book she read called Goodbye Things in a video from like a year or two ago. And obviously I bought it and obviously it was amazing. And the author in the book talks about how everything you own is telling you something and those things they are telling you create what he calls the silent to-do list. So let me give you an example. Right now, where I am standing. There is a basket of laundry right here that I just brought up from the laundry room saying, take me upstairs, put me away. I can see in the kitchen right here, there's some plates for my kids breakfast saying, wash me. There is a box right here that I haven't opened yet. And it's saying, open me, put me away. But it's also kind of saying, did you really need to buy me if you haven't already opened me? Why are you making impulse purchases? There's a few tools on the counter here to my right saying, put me away in the basement. And them telling me to put them away in the basement is also reminding me the tool bench in the basement really needs to be organized. Right? All of these things simply by existing in my home have made my to-do list so much longer. I want to take a quick break here to tell you about the sponsor for today's video, which is the farmer's dog, which means I have a guest for today's sponsor. It is Olive. Olive, internet, internet, 
Olive. <laughs> when Olive was about a year old, we found out that she had some allergies and after doing some allergy testing, we realized that some of it was caused by dry food storage. And so we started looking into options for fresh dog food. And we found that the farmer's dog was the perfect solution. The farmer's dog doesn't just give Olive health first fresh ingredients. I mean, you can like literally see the meat and veggies in the food, but it's super convenient. It comes pre-packaged like this in these like freezer blocks. I most keep most of them stored right in our freezer and then I'll pull one or two out at a time to put in the fridge. And then these are also pre-portioned so you don't even need to think about it. It tells me right here, Olive gets half of one of these once a day. So I don't, as a busy mom, like I need something that's easy too. And I love how convenient this is. But the biggest difference we've noticed since switching to the farmer's dog, not just that Olive's itchy skin has really decreased, is that Olive loves meal time now. She used to leave dry kibble in her bowl like all day long. Sometimes it would still be there the next day. When the farmer's dog is in her bowl, she gobbles up dinner right away. We bought Olive when my son was only a year old and I want them to be able to grow up together. And so um, using the farmer's dog is just a investment in Olive's long-term health. Cause we want you around as long as we can get ya. Yes, we do. If you want to try out the farmer's dog for yourself, there's a link in my description that will give you 50% off your own delivery of fresh dog food. Okay, but now back to thoughts on what your stuff is telling you. All of the things need to be taken care of. And that's one way I love to look at my clutter to help me when I'm trying to have less. Every single item needs to be cared for in your home. Dishes need to be cleaned and put away. Toys need to be kept organized. The pieces of the toys need to be kept together and they need to be washed on occasion and put away at the end of every night. Plants need to be watered and repotted and fertilized. Kitchen gadgets need to be stored and organized so you can easily find them and cleaned and all the pieces need to keep, be kept together. And clothing needs to be washed and hung and maybe ironed and it needs to be worn. And in order for things to be worn, now it's telling you other things like, hey, did you lose weight so you can fit into those pants? Or why did you buy this shirt if it doesn't match with anything you wear? The point is your stuff is noisy. And while I love Dawn's minimalism and I love the concepts laid out in Goodbye Everything, I don't personally consider myself a minimalist. Someone actually asked me on Instagram the other day why I don't call myself a minimalist. And I think it's just because I don't want the pressure of the title. I have two small children aged one and three. And at this season of my life, very often my house can get messy and the basement gets neglected and things might pile up. And I think if I called myself a minimalist, it would make me feel like I was failing, which I know is not the point of minimalism at all. But I just wanted to share that in case anyone else sometimes feels that way about minimalism. But the real point is, even if you aren't a minimalist, like if you walked into my home, you would never say this woman is a minimalist, but you can still use minimalism as a tool, even if you aren't a minimalist. Using the fundamentals of minimalism to strip away the excess stuff that help make your silent to-do list smaller. Because here's the truth. You don't need all this stuff. You don't, you don't need all of it. Not only is it causing added stress and work, you really just don't need it. And when you allow yourself to get rid of it, even some of it, right? doesn't have to be minimalist level. You immediately alleviate some of that extra weight, literally and figuratively. One way I like to look at my stuff is as an employee. When you hire an employee, the point is what? They do work for your business. They take work off your plate and they do tasks that grow your business and you pay them for what they do. But if having the employee isn't increasing your revenue, it doesn't really help. For example, I have a virtual assistant. She helps me send newsletters and manage some backend stuff. She does work that frees me up to make more YouTube videos and content, which makes my business more money. So I pay her a certain amount of money each month, but it frees me up to do work that'll make me three, five, or even 10 times that much. This is a worthwhile employee. It's worth investing the money and time into having her and managing her. Your stuff is like that. So let's take a look at kids' toys. I love using kids' toys as an example for this. Every time I do an audit of my kids' toys, I ask myself, what is worth managing? I wanna think about which toys my kids play with the most, what gets the most use, what is easy to manage and take care of and keep organized. Toys that are never touched and never played with don't deserve time on the shelf. And toys that are really hard to organize and keep tidy and only played with a little bit aren't worth it either. They aren't pulling their weight for this business. Okay, so here's an example. These are magnet tiles. My son loves these. He plays with them pretty much every single day. They are insanely easy to manage, 
to keep tidy so they are very well worth employee in the kids room they're actually so good i just bought another set which is why this box is overflowing and i need to get a new one here's another example this barn toy um, both my kids age one and three play with this all the time and it's super easy to manage because you can store all the animals right inside and then just pick it up and store it away so again it doesn't only come down to how much my kids play with it which is a ton both of my kids do but it's also very easy to manage an inventory all right in these baskets i end up with like random cars and both of my kids do love cars but when i look at this i can sort of say do i really need this many cars sure it's really easy for me to manage them because i just throw them in these bins but i probably don't need this many i could easily audit some of these out because even if both my children love cars we don't necessarily need 25 of them let's look at another example in the kitchen okay so this is our what i call valet drawer i got that from hoarderly instead of calling it a junk drawer because junk drawer makes you more likely to put junk in it anyways this is our valet drawer in the kitchen I organized it recently, so it looks pretty good. And I do keep these miscellaneous bins. I think these are really important in valet drawers because sometimes you do just have some random stuff. You need a place to put it. But these often need to be audited and cleaned out like at least once a month. And I noticed right away we have these two um, cell phone cases here. My husband just switched out the case on his phone for the first time in like years. And now we have the old one sitting here, right? And the chance that we are probably gonna put this and the chance that he's gonna use this old case again is very, very unlikely he just bought a brand new one and when you look at it in the grand scheme of things in the entire drawer it's taking up a good fraction of space and so when you really kind of think about it that way and think about it as an employee if you think about either the time you invest to take care of it and or the space that it's taking up I'm paying this cell phone case quite a bit of real estate in this drawer and it's really not serving me at all because it's basically a case we're never going to use again. Okay, let's take a look in a kitchen drawer. Okay, so in this drawer, I don't have a ton of stuff, right? That's great. I have this meat thermometer that I bought and I really like it, but when I bought it, it came with like a secondary meat thermometer stick. And in my mind, I'm like, that's really great in case I ever need to be like watching the temperatures of two things. And so I've sort of been holding on to it. But when I really think about it, I don't know if I've ever really needed to check the temperature of two things at once. And if I did, I can easily just pull this one out and stick it into the other piece of meat, you know? And then what am I doing? Am I keeping it just in case maybe this one breaks someday? I don't really know. It's just become this excess thing in my drawer. I'm planning to do a video about this a little bit more, but I feel like so often we end up with a lot of stuff simply because it came with something that we bought. So lots of things that you buy nowadays, they come with these like extra parts or they come with a spare or they come in packs of two. And so you end up with these extras that you keep like just in case. What if you need it? What if it breaks? What if you do need to? And uh, lots of times you don't. And so you just end up having to manage two things instead of one. So there you have it. You don't have to have all this stuff. You really truly don't need it because having it makes it the boss of you. But allowing yourself to rid yourself of some excess stuff that is asking more than it gives frees you up and makes you the boss. You the boss. As always, thank you so much for stopping by and watching this video. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Remember to be kind to yourself and others, and I will see you all in my next video.